This next missing person is from Clay City, Kentucky, in Powell County, Kentucky. Sean Glover. His date of birth is unknown. At the time of his disappearance, he had brown hair. Uh, in his pictures, he wore his hair very short, um, like a crew cut type of haircut. Um, he was 29 at the time that he disappeared, and he was 140 pounds with brown hair and brown eyes. He was last seen in Clay City, Kentucky on September the 27th, 2019. He has sandy brown hair and brown eyes. If you have seen Sean, please contact your local law enforcement. Now, I found this story about him on Project Code Case. And the picture they have of him here, his hair is a little bit longer. This was written by Dylan Kelly. Sean Glover had a big heart, not only for people he loved, but for people he didn't even know. If we were going down the street and somebody would be out with a cup, he would always come up with a little bit of money and some change to give to them, said his mother, Joanne Curry. The world has been without Sean's generous nature since 2019. He went missing in September, and though police presume that he's dead, his body has never been found. Sean was tall and thin with sandy brown hair, a long nose, and brown eyes. He was 30 years old and living in Stanton, Kentucky, when he went missing. Police have very few clues to go on as to what happened to Sean. He was last seen at the Clay City Inn in Clay, Clay City, Kentucky. Sean was a diabetic and his insulin bag was found at the inn a few days after his disappearance. So I'm assuming that he was staying there. This is like a little, it's a small hotel. A few weeks after he went missing, a fire was set at the house where Sean was staying. And officials ruled it as arson. His his remains were not found after the fire was contained. The last day Sean and his family were together, his mother made him made them all take a picture together. His brother Stephen and Stephen's son. His mother had that picture printed on a t shirt and she still wears it every day. Sean was a very bright young man. It was crazy how good it was crazy how he could see something be done and learn how to do it so quickly, said his brother, Stephen. She remembers one time when the family went on vacation. Sean couldn't swim, but he jumped in the pool anyway and just started swimming. The first time he rode a dirt bike, he just got on it and just rode off like he had always known how. He could pick up on any little thing and learn how to do it. He was very adventurous, and he loved to explore. He never met a stranger. Sean could walk up and talk to people as though he had known them his whole life. He was a really funny kid and grown-up. He was constantly trying to make everyone laugh. Uh, he was a wonderful son. We talked on the phone just about every day. No matter where he was, he would call me. She says that he said, I don't trust anybody outside of my circle, and I'm always on guard. It kind of darkened and took the good out of everything, he said. So they they refer to him, the mother and the brother refer to him as though he is deceased. This is a quote from his mother. Since Sean's passing, it's just like there's this dark cloud every day when you wake up. You never stop thinking about him. So she's referring to him as though he's passed away. So maybe that is just what she's had to do in order to justify him not being in contact with her or anything. Really nothing to say that he did pass away. His body has never been found. And nobody has seen him or heard from him. So they are just assuming... But where would his remains be if he had just... Now here is a little bit more 
from the Charlie Project. Sean would be 33 years old today. His birth date was May the 24th, 1989. He was 30 years old when he disappeared. He is an insulin-dependent diabetic, but his insulin kit was left behind. Sean was biracial. He was African-American and Caucasian. He had black hair and brownish hazel eyes. He has Glover. Glover has tattoos on both arms, both hands, and his chest. There are some photos here of his tattoos. Here are some circumstances of his disappearance. Glover was last seen at the Clay City Inn in Powell County, Kentucky. He was with a woman he was dating. There was an altercation and Glover disappeared, leaving behind his insulin kit. There was no insulin left in the kit, only the meter and test strips. He has never been heard from again. After his disappearance, his home was destroyed by fire. The cause was determined to be arson. Authorities searched for his remains at the site but could not find any human remains. This is from Lex 18 News, Stanton, Kentucky. This is dated October 18, 2019. The girlfriend of a man reported missing since last September has Lots of questions about the fire that broke out in the morning hours destroying the home. Kelly Elam told Lexington 18 that Sean Glover, the father of her children, had been staying at the Maple Street home before he vanished, September the 27th. Donnie Sons Jr., whose aunt owns the house, claims he saw Glover leave with a woman two or three weeks ago. Sons said he didn't know about the fire until police arrested him on an unrelated charge Friday morning. Son says he has no idea what happened to Sean Glover. Kelly Elam, the mother of Sean Glover's children, says she isn't so sure she believes that. She says she's simply trying to track down Glover's last whereabouts. We're not going to quit looking for him until we find him. Stanton Fire Investigators said the fire apparently started in an area around the kitchen and in the front bedroom. They believe it's electrical in nature, although another story that I read says they now believe that the fire was arson. House fire now considered arson. Woman believes the fire connected to the fire is connected to the disappearance of Sean Glover. This was dated October the 24th, so just around a week later. A house fire that broke out in Stanton last week is now considered to be arson. Lex 18 obtained surveillance video that Powell County Authority says shows a woman believed to have set the fire. Officials say she has been questioned and charges are pending. They do not believe the fire is connected to the disappearance of a man. Well, I find that kind of hard to believe. This man just goes missing, and within a short period of time, his home is burned to the ground, and they don't think it's connected. People are saying that he was last seen at this Clay City Inn, but why was he at the Clay City Inn? If he had a home, why was he there? Was he there visiting family who was staying there? Is it possible, this is just me putting out my own thoughts, is it possible that he was killed inside of the home and the fire was to burn evidence? He could have been shot and there could have been um, bullet holes in the wall or the floor. There could have been blood stains. And they said they didn't find any remains inside the home, but... Is it possible that the fire was just so hot that it would have burned anything up? I don't know, but stranger things. Sean Glover's ex-girlfriend does not agree with the deputy. She said, I do not believe, I do believe that this was arson and that it is connected to Sean's disappearance. 
She said the room that Sean was staying in was board, was being boarded up. Now, this is apparently by the people who own the house. Elam said she believes people know the truth, and they have confided in her about what happened. I think he had a seizure or he overdosed, and they got scared, and then they got rid of him instead of bringing him home. So I didn't want to speculate, but the more I looked into this story, I did see that this man did have some, there was some photos of him having been arrested. I was going to go back and try to find more about that. So apparently the girlfriend says that she believes he overdosed or he had a seizure. Maybe he had not had his insulin because they did find his um, test strips, and but they didn't find his insulin. But because she knew him better than probably most people, um, she probably knew that there was a possibility that he overdosed. She would have known if he was into drugs and... Was he seen at the Clay City Inn? Did guests there or employees there or someone who he knew who was staying there witness him being there? Uh, this was not, this was in the time when there would have been cameras. So do they have footage of him on camera at this hotel, at this inn? Or did someone just say... Now, this is from Yaya521 on Web Sleuths. Um, the mother says that she believes there had been an altercation. He was with the young woman that he was dating, and a few days later, his insulin bag was found in the back of the hotel. They say he was killed here and moved his body to that house that he was, where the house was burned down. I beg to differ that my theory is that he died inside of the house and they burned the house down to hide evidence. He could very possibly have been at the Clay City Inn earlier. Um, what I would ask is at, at what time and day was he seen at this um so now this person, the same user, says the video in this link is a must watch. The video surveillance shows Sean crawling through the yard and then hiding. Who was he hiding from? There have been no leads in the search for Sean Glover. This is from WDKY Fox 56 from Lexington, Kentucky. A missing persons case out of Powell County reads like a movie script. I don't see this link about this uh, about him supposedly crawling in the yard and hiding. Is it possible, like I said, that he had been shot and there was blood in the house? Maybe even shell casings or bullet holes where the police would have, you know, asked more questions. This was posted in January of 2019. Okay, let's see. I may have found it. Let me look. If they will allow me to do that, I will clip it. And Now, this was in daytime. You can see. You can see him in this video. There's no sound. So, according to this video... On the 27th at 11.15 a.m., he's seen in the backyard, and you can see it. I'm going to try to post this video if it will let me. It's just according to the rules of this page. He's kind of like he's hunkering down, and there's a road that runs behind the house, and there's, some, there's a bunch of debris and stuff in the backyard. It looks like maybe a building and some... A car hauler type of trailer. 
So he's hunkering down in the backyard, and I'm going to try to clip this video, like I said. This does add more to this story. There, the, the house fire is 100,000% connected to this man's disappearance. They say that no remains were found inside the home, but how, I don't know. We've heard of fires like that before where the fire would be, according to what is being used, as an accelerant. And who was the woman who, was was there ever an arrest in connection to this house fire? They said that charges were pending against a woman. A homeowner that had previously been unaccounted for after an overnight fire in Powell County has been located and arrested. The fire started at around 12.45 a.m. on Maple Street in Stanton, Kentucky. Authorities say the homeowner, Donnie Sons Jr., was placed in custody on an outstanding warrant for an unrelated cause, for an unrelated charge. He was aware of the fire. Um, this is from December of 2020. This is from the same website, WDKY 56 Fox, Lexington. Still no clues in the disappearance of a Powell County man. A missing person case from Powell County, um, Joanne Carey has been searching for her son for the past 15 months. Now, about to spend another Christmas without him, she's begging for those who know what happened to tell her. Okay, so Glover, Sean Glover, was a native of Lebanon in Marion County, but he had been staying in Powell County to be closer to his girlfriend. Was this Kelly Elam, who was his girlfriend, was she... Related to these, the Stoney sons, or was that her ex? Were the two of them involved in a relationship? And I wouldn't, I'm not pointing a finger at her as maybe having been involved in the arson or anything like that. Until I could find something about that for sure, I wouldn't say that. But. There has to be a connection between her and this family that owned this house. So the mother goes on to say, Mother's intuition tells her that her son is not coming back. We know that he's dead, and we know that they've done something with his body. She told Crime Stoppers. We're trying to locate his body. That's the main thing. As the family began looking into Sean's disappearance, they uncovered surveillance video from a home where Sean was living. They say that it shows Sean terrified, hiding in the backyard. Their family made trips for months between Lebanon and Powell County, hoping to turn over a new stone we started in one part of the county and went to the other. We tracked every back road, every side road, every hollow, and every highway. We searched every place that we could. The investigation hit a roadblock over the summer when Glovers, when the Glovers found out the deputy working Sean's case quit the sheriff's department. Desperate for help, they reached out to Crime Stoppers, hoping the promise of cash would compel someone to come forward with information. It could be something as simple as somebody remembering seeing him. Something went on in September of 2019. They saw someone in their yard. They saw something out of place. They saw people who didn't belong there. Those types of things. People don't understand when you take somebody's life, you don't just take their life, you're taking the whole family. As I began to, you know, read about this missing, uh, simply a case of a missing person, it turned into something much deeper than that. 
Um, I, I know, and, and I know that the police also know that this house fire is related to this man's disappearance. There are coincidences in life, but not that close together and not that outstanding. It's my personal belief. Um, I don't know the connection between this Sean Glover and this Kelly Elam and their connection to this Donnie Sons Jr. Um, I have even looked up Donnie Sons Jr. to see what I can find about him. And uh, and this was four years ago, three and a half years ago, you know, and I can find no follow-up about it. So I'm going to end this section of this video now, and I'll just say that if I find any updates on any of these people or any connection between them, I will come back and post it. Thank you for listening.